What's good, y'all? JNC Collectibles. We got our jib. What's what we do today? Going? What we do uh, today? We got top 16 at YCS uh, Richmond, Virginia. God, yes. Shout out to Dragon Inc. Shout out to uh, JNC5 for 5% off. You okay, know talk get. to him. Talk you know to him. Talk get. to him. Shout out to my beautiful prize board for top 16. Ooh. Konami blessed me today. Talk to him. But uh, yeah, so today I played Infra Noble Knight. Um, Die Bell Star, Sinful basically. It's a deck that I've been working on with uh, my boy Lun, shout out to him. And then I started working on the deck with Pack and a few other players. Uh, shout out to Bozo Court, shout out to Wakanda. Um, yeah, so this is the deck. Uh, I played three Neo Space Connector, one Dolphin. It's the best starter in the deck. Um, for a while, it was kind of contention between this and like Uppercutter and Sparrow, but this is just like infinitely better, especially with like all the hand traps in the format. There was a lot of droll on um, this format or this event because of the success of um, Manadium last event. So it was like no, it was no question. You had to play this. this these cards were insane. Best one card starter in the deck. For the Infra Noble Knight cards, it was one copy of Ogier, one copy of Oliver, one copy of Turpin. Uh, and one copy of Ricardetto, and then two copies of Renaud. So basically, uh, this is the least amount of these cards that you have to play. These cards are kind of like normal summons. This is the main card you're summoning off of a soul, and this is like the best extender. The reason why you don't play three of this card is because a lot of the times you're starting with Connector, and Connector uh, doesn't combo with this card. Like if Connector gets stopped and you have this card in your hand, it's like a dead card. So that's the reason why you wouldn't play three of it, but it's good enough that you want a second one for the follow-up turn. So. This was the Infernoble Monsters. Uh, then for the next engine was the Fenrir. Shout out to Jose for the ultis. Uh, triple Fenrir, one Rise Heart. So this engine was actually really crazy for me. So um, Pac and uh, Walter decided to put this in the side deck and main three more hand traps. But I felt like this engine was too powerful going first. Like if you open up this plus a way to assault, like your hand is pretty much unbeatable. Like you have like over a 90% chance of winning going first through like multiple hand traps. Like I played through like three hand traps multiple times during this tournament. So um, this card is like a better red layer. It's an interruption and all of the mid range matchups is like super strong because like uh, you hand trap them once or they end on like a weird board and like your engine can usually push through it. And then like Fender just like completely push it through and then you combo them. Um, yeah, so this engine was insane. Wouldn't cut it, we'll play it again. Uh, next were the fire one of fire flint lady uh red layer and gear Freed. these cards are basically like search targets for durendal and other cards this is the main card that you're adding off of a soul because you need like a fire warrior to discard usually during your combo this was kind of pack's idea I, I didn't have this card in the deck originally but pack and uh gunther they were talking about this card just being able to be searched off of durendal to just out sp immediately and then if you have museum up this card outs your opponent's Fenrir's because like Museum makes all your Fire Warriors gain 500. So you just search this, summon this, and then it just outs uh, SP. It, the card was insane. I outed multiple SPs. Like in top 32, my my race opponent, he ended on like SP with some sets. And I hard drew that I just summoned this and just attacked over SP and then just played in Mephisto. It was like a really good addition. Also, this card is the most important card in your deck against Mikanko. So when they Acid Golem you, you just go Durando, search this, Tribute Summon over it, and then you just combo them and kill them. So... Yeah, those tribute are Tribute something crazy. Yeah, tribute something and then kill them. It was actually mm -hmm. insane. Um, then for the Sinful package, I play one copy of Dark Witch, three copies of Wanted, and one copy of Original. Shout out to my boy John for letting me borrow these from locals here in Charlotte. Um, yeah, this is kind of what like takes the deck over the edge. Uh, this engine allows you to play through Nibiru, or like play into Nibiru pretty carelessly, because like before... The main way to play around Nibiru was like a two card combo that required like a monster to make a soul plus Renaud. And that was like the kind of the only way to play around Nibiru. Now you can just like throw all your cards into Nibiru and then it doesn't matter because like afterwards you just do this, summon Ricardetta from your deck, you just full combo them still. So one error that was on my deck list that should have been in my deck but I did not play uh, was Link Spider. So for Indy, I played Link Spider. And when I started building the deck with Pack and Walter for this event, they were like, Link Spider doesn't come up enough. We're going to cut it. So I ended up cutting it. But then they ended up putting it back in their deck last minute. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, crazy. And I had to like, so like, it didn't really come up. Like it came up kind of, but I'm like really proficient with this deck. So I just had to like play in a weird way that like, I had, like I couldn't. If I had Link Spider, like if I had Link Spider, it doesn't matter. I could just like throw my cards into Nibiru. But because I didn't have it, I had to play in a weird way so that if I did get Nibiru, it didn't like end my turn, you know? So that, that engine was insane. 
Uh, for the rest of the spells, you have one Rota, three copies of Heritage, uh, three copies of Museum. These cards are insane. Museum is low-key the best card in the deck. The only issue with Museum is when you draw Museum plus your uh, search targets, then it loses value. But hard drawing Museum in your combo allows you, this is the card that allows you to play through like a bunch of hand traps. Because if you open your two card combo plus Museum, then like it, it doesn't matter. Like there is no correct place in the beer. You just like play through it, it doesn't matter. Uh, then for the equip spells, it's triple Durendal, one copy of All Mace, one Phoenix Blade, one DDR, and one Angelic Ring. Uh, this is pretty standard. This is standard. Uh, this is the new card that just came out in Age of Overlord. This card is insane. It's ridiculous. This is what makes the deck actually viable. So basically what it does is it, re it negates the first spell effect that resolves. <laughs> Rest in peace DDR. Right? Rest in peace DDR. So yeah, it negates the first spell effect that resolves. So basically on your end board, you end on multiple Omni negates. And you just negate all their spells and keep the angelic ring. So you just play your own cards like Droplets, Tactics, Dark Ruler, Super Poly. All those cards just get negated by this. That guy's crazy. So the end board, if you end on the full board, the end board is unbreakable. It's Appaloosa for three, double Charles, plus Baron, plus Angel Ring. It's literally like eight or nine interruptions. Super yeah, Poly Super doesn't Poly, even out it, Yeah, right? Super Poly doesn't out it. Why so, is that? Uh, because when Super Poly resolves, it's negated by angelic ring. So God, this is. card is literally insane. And, and it's a time card. You can destroy it to gain 500 life. So that never came up, but it, it's relevant. Uh, then for the non-engine hand traps, three copies of Droll, three copies of uh, Ash Blossom, three copies of Nibiru. Okay. So this... High impact. High yeah, high impact. So basically going into the event, this was the only card that was like Not for sure going to be yeah, yeah, the non-engine. These six were kind of up in the air between cards like Imperm, Valor, uh, things of that sort. Um, Gabe, uh, shout out to Gabe Susie. He kind of convinced me to play these six in the slots. Basically, he was like, "Well, my engine is not the greatest going second, so I need a hand trap that like." So the math basically, you're most likely like eighty something percent of the time you draw like one hand trap. So the majority of the time, like you should see one non engine card. So you need the one non engine card to be as high impact as possible. Ash was just generically good into everything, and usually in most matchups, it's not really a one for one if you think about it because it's hitting their most important card. But these six, you just need um, the most high impact card. And this was kind of like it, this card was insane, and this card was insane. So, like, I, I, I love this, and I would not change it. So, this was the main deck, it was 45 cards. Yep. For the extra deck, you have one copy of Angelica, one copy of Captain Roland, one copy of Charles for the in for noble knight synchros this card's insane shout out to pack for letting me use the starlight um yeah these cards are crazy uh you go through all of them in your combo and yeah you can't so some people play two of this but the second one never comes up it only comes up in really weird lines so i only played one um then the last synchros baron you don't end on this every time but if you have like a really cracked hand you end on this instead of gear freed and it's just like a better gear for you to just negate anything. For the Xyz, it was one copy of Dempsey's, one copy of Boguska, and one copy of Typhon. Um, this is the only one I ever summoned. I never summoned these two cards. This card was supposed to be the Link Spider, and going forward, this card should be Link Spider. This card never came up. It's really there for the Shifter decks, but there are different ways to deal with Shifter. So this card never came up. This card, I never summoned, but I would keep because this card is specifically for the Manadium matchup. So when you hand chart the Manadium matchup, they usually always get to like a level 10 synchro plus SP. And you're able to just normal summon a dude, turn this, turn it into Typhon, attack over the SP, then bounce the Baron. And they usually don't have really good follow up. So this card would stay. So yeah, that's it for the Xyz. And for the Links, one Link Karibo. Uh, I can explain this card. So basically this card is for when you go second you turn one of your level ones into Link Spider and then turn it into SP and then banish a card, which is relevant because usually you can't get to SP banish going second without going through a soul. So you add this card in your deck, you have this, double Charlemagne, double I sold. Um, yeah, you end on both of these, spell and trap negates, copy Charles name, insane, a sold. This is the best Link 2 in the game. This card is insane. Um, yeah, probably should be banned eventually, but you know, we have it for now. Double SP. Yeah, so you usually end on one on the first turn. Uh, you can make the second one for follow-up. It was very good. And then the last card in that deck was Appaloosa. This is part of your end board. So you end on Apple for three usually. Uh, side deck, we have three um, Fek Veiler, three Impermanence, 
these cards going against rescue ace in addition to all the non-engine in the main you just want to like overside for certain problematic matchups these cards were solid against rescue ace when i saw them uh two copies of storm duster again rescue ace plus back row deck sometimes you can have the issue with like floodgates against like dexter's labyrinth it was like fine uh then for the spice so we played three copies of cross out designator one copy of call by the grave then for the two targets we played one copy of dimensional shifter and then one copy of yeep <laughs> explain so, that so my basically e. the idea was and this was walter's idea walter's idea was the yeep. we were already playing it with shifter because like this thing gets like destroyed by shifter so like walter was like yo what do we just play yeep and we were like, yo, that's actually kind of crazy. So basically, going second against um, Pearly, you side in these four cards and, uh, in addition to like some of the Valor cards, and you just cross out their Yeep. Because like, they can draw cards, but if they don't end on Noir, you're usually just killing them through it. And then say, for instance, you draw enough hand traps to stop them from even getting to Yeep, then you just have cross out in your deck. So like, if they hand trap you, then you just have one of every hand trap in your deck. So you just like cross out anything. So this card was insane. I cross out in the Yeep this weekend. I know Pac told me in one of his rounds he cross out and somebody's Yeep and the guy just scooped in the middle of the game. He was like, yeah, I've seen enough. It wasn't his weekend. You know, but yeah, this is crazy. So it's yeah. better than three, uh, it's better than three Eclipse. Eclipse yeah. It's better than Spellbound. Because yeah. it's more versatile because it's a card that you can side in going first. You can't just, ask like, that either. Completely, yeah, you can just completely like destroy your opponent. But yeah, that's oh, yes. Uh, I had a great time. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to uh, all the boys who are here. I was chilling. Uh, yeah, it was a good, it was a good event. Shout out Yampi. Oh, shout out Yampi. Shout out my E. My boy the Joker. Let's go. Joker haircut. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, you out. Jeez.